I had already physically like exerted myself so much, I had no energy left in me. I had lost for the first time all season, the biggest and most important match all season. The story that uh, we're about to tell is the hardest match I've ever played in, and I think most of my teammates have ever played in. I started coaching at Fowler High School in 1960. And then in 2003, I was going to retire. And I got a call from Mr. Wigley asking me whether or not I'd like to start a tennis program here at Bakersfield Christian High School. Our record was 9-0. Uh, and 0. We were seated number one for nine years in a row. And we won every year. It was really neat that Tessa actually got to start in her eighth grade year. And when she came to Bakersfield Christian, I knew that it was going to be really competitive. So I wanted her to find herself in, in, in actually in tennis and um, just with her Christian walk. In the mornings, I usually uh, read the Jesus Calling. I usually, I, on my phone, I have an app and it's the verse of the day. And so I usually read that to get me started for the day and then just do my morning like prayer and stuff like that and then continue my day. My friend Delaney Roach is number one singles and I'm number six singles. I've grown up in a Christian home, going to church every Sunday, um, reading my Bible, praying on a daily basis. And so um, I have learned to develop my own faith and my own spiritual walk with Christ. So I always look for verses that would challenge them spiritually and challenge them with their Christian walk. And so I would text them verses every morning and I would look for the response. When I started the year this year, I was a little apprehensive on what we would probably do. But this last year, 215, it was a rebuilding year and that most of the players were very, very young. Well, we lost a lot of seniors last year, so we had a young team. And I think um, more than that, we had a lot of new players. It was mainly, a, our big team is mainly up of juniors and a little bit of sophomores and like one freshman. So rebuilding, you could say, is just teaching the new kids and um, the younger kids on how to do the fundamentals of tennis and the experience. The chances of a number three seed being the number one seed uh, is probably as rare as you could make it. And essentially, whoever is seated number one is uh, predicted to win. Tennis is uh, usually singles and doubles, so a team like BCHS, you'll play six singles and uh, three doubles. The matches, in some cases, could, could go as long as two and a half hours. And the night before the Valley Championship game, as I was trying to build her up as much as a dad can, I told her, I go, hey honey, you can do this. Her opponent was good, but I said, you can uh, come through with this. And she goes, dad, coach really doesn't think we can do it. He said in the paper, he thought this was a rebuilding year. Uh, you know, how am I gonna build myself up? But I said, honey, that's where the Lord comes involved. Because this is where you gotta find the Lord. You've gotta know that he's got your back, no matter the outcome, how it's gonna happen, and encourage yourself in the Lord. Frank had told us, you know, like, this isn't going to be easy. This isn't going to be like anything um, that you've ever faced this year. So we had like a hour and a half to two hour van ride or bus ride to think about the game and mentally prepare ourselves. Uh, Delaney had to play this young girl from uh, Redwood again. Because I had already beaten this girl, I was predicted to beat her again. So we played each other in uh, Team Valley and she beat me pretty badly. And um, that kind of got me down. I wasn't sure anymore we were gonna be able to win. That had been, that was my first loss all season. And it, all the whole team has always known that Delaney always gives them a win. But when she sat next to me, I just looked at Tessa, and as Tessa went to the other side, she stood there, and there was a moment Tessa looked, and she's like, oh no, Delaney's lost. And then I started losing, and um, she came back and tied with me. It was uh, six all, which is six six. 
So it was really a trying moment for me because I actually knew that I didn't have any involvement, I'd be on the sidelines. And so we started the tiebreaker and I had lost the first point. And that was when I turned around and it was my serve and I just had to stop for a minute and think about what I was going to do next and how I was going to do it. And I just had to um, say prayer and quote in my head Philippians 4.13, which is the verse that I had read that morning in my verse of the day. And it was, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. I ended up winning the tiebreaker and so I had won my match and I had walked off the court and we went straight into doubles. We went into doubles after singles, um, tied 3-3. We started losing the first set. We were down 0-3. And we looked down the court and you could see all the three courts were lined up and you could see the scorecards. We were all losing 0-3. Every single one of our doubles was down. And me and Annabella look, like, look at each other and we're just like, we have to do our part. We can't think about what the other is going on on the other courts. We just have to do what we our job and then we can worry about what they're doing. But everyone could feel just a little switch in the tide. And at that point on, Tessa and Annabella didn't, um, I don't think, lose a, um, a game. We kind of got more energy, you could say, and we started winning. And we won our first set, and then we won our second set. And then we had gotten off the court and realized that our second doubles had lost. And so it was all up to first doubles, which was Delaney and Abby. Going into doubles, I, um our team was in a huddle like we normally are, um, and Frank was standing right there with us, and he basically, I in my head, before he had even said anything, knew um, how he was gonna have to line up the doubles, and um, how our number one, me and my um, partner on my team, were gonna have to face their number one and number two singles player. And um, having just lost to her, I um, realized that I wasn't sure that we were going to be able to win. As I was struggling and a verse came to mind that I had, I don't remember where I got it from, it just came into my head, um, Isaiah 54, 17, and basically it just said um, that God says, I promise I will give you strength to face and defeat your adversities. And I um, realized, I think for the first time that like, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel and I realized that like we could finish this and we could win. So I really got into it, started being able to encourage the girls. And as the girls were there and they started to come on in their doubles match, they came from behind and they actually won the uh, first set. So I kind of just started saying that verse over and over in my head. Um, and essentially we came back and won the second set. But just knowing after they had hit the last uh, winner shot and um, the other team not getting it back, it was kind of just like, it kind of took us all a moment. We were all ready to run out on the court and rush them, her and Abby and get ready to congratulate them. But it was kind of just like, we had finally done it. It was kind of a moment inside your head that like all the work, hard work that we had put into this season, it was finally worth it and worth the end of all the hard work. The car ride home was, uh, we were both very exhausted and it was me and Delaney in the back seat and my dad in the front seat. I had mentioned that I had quoted a Bible verse and Delaney was like, oh my gosh, no way, I did too. And I kind of was like, what, like you were quoting a verse too? And I looked at her in surprise. My dad was shocked too. Uh, he had the same reaction that we had. And I looked at it, I actually pulled the car over and I looked at the girls, I go, so you're telling me that both of you independently had this experience that you asked God to get involved with your play and your moment right then. And they said, yes, I go, guys, we just gotta stop. We gotta give God the praise, we gotta give God the glory, and we gotta find a way to tell everybody else how you believe God came in in an improbable situation and turned into something pretty crazy. Was it about the tennis game? I believe God wants to do things to get the glory. And I think he can do things on a tennis court and get the glory, because I do believe in the end, we're trying to give God the glory, and I hope this film or this documentary gives God the glory.